Up next, phase one of rusting the 1951 Chevy Fleetline. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from HobbyLinkInternational.com and welcome to another YouTube video. Today, we're working on phase one of rusting out the 1950 one Chevy fleet line. So basically I got the regular car colors on, I got the rust colors on, and then I did my thing, which I'm gonna show you in the video. I actually have a question for you guys, so if you stick around to the end of the video, I got a little bit of a question about how you want me to do certain things. But enough about that, let me show you what I did on the car. Okay, let's get back on this build. As you can see, we changed up mats to the green mat because we're gonna start doing some dirty stuff. And also I got my blue rubber gloves on, this way my oily hands don't touch anything we've cleaned up. Basically what I'm going to do now is we're going to take the car and we're going to clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. This way I get every greasy bit off of the car. I'm using a microfiber cloth. This way it doesn't leave any lint behind like paper towels do. We don't want that there because we're going to be painting soon. So the easiest way is just take a microfiber cloth, wipe everything down. We'll actually put a little rubbing alcohol on there. I use 91% isopropyl alcohol. It'll take everything off there and leave us with a clean surface and then we can start our weathering and any other techniques that we're going to do on the car. Now that the car is nice and clean, we're gonna give it a little spin around, just to have a little fun. But seriously, now that it's clean, we got all the fingerprints and grease off it, we could start priming this guy up. And I use Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000. It actually fills in the little scratches that we have left over from sanding and stuff like that and leaves me a nice base to work with. I really like this and the Tamiya Fine brand spray primers. Okay, we're back. The car is all primed up. Nice and sealed, nice flat coat. What took me a couple hours letting it dry and everything, you saw in about a second. So there are a little bit of deviations in it with cat hair and stuff like that that I have to sand out. And also for some reason it didn't cover this marker over here, but that's no big deal because we're gonna be painting over it. You're not gonna see it anyhow. And then we're gonna get to the painting of the rust here very shortly. I did make one mistake on the side that I'll show you here. I got a little overzealous and sprayed into the filler way too much and you can see the drip marks there. I don't hide anything from you. All I'm gonna do is sand that down and then we're gonna reprime it, get it all nice and spiffy and we'll be back to painting. So the next thing we're gonna work on are the pieces that are separated from the kit, which are the hood, the door and the trunk, but I have to set them up so I can paint them. The hood is very easy, it's got the pins on the side so I can just use my skewer with my alligator clip on it and hold it that way I can prime and paint. But for the other two, I'm gonna use Rapid Fuse by DAP. This is my favorite CA glue. It's really good. If you watched any of my other videos, I've used it a bunch of times. Next, I'm just gonna put it on the inside of the door because we won't see that anyhow. And then I'm gonna spread it out a little bit, make it a little thinner. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the trunk because that's gonna be hidden also. and We don't have to worry about any marks or anything like that when we get to painting. Then I'm gonna have my Insta set on hand. This way, once I have my skewer, into the CA, I can hit it with the kicker and it'll dry really quickly. Next, I'm just gonna throw a couple pumps on there, which is a lot. And then in a couple seconds, that's gonna be dry and I could pick it up and now we're ready to paint that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the trunk. Just throw the skewer in there, hit it with a couple pumps. That'll dry up in a few seconds, lift it up and we're ready to paint. We're gonna be using inks to do the rusting portion of this build. They're acrylic inks. You can use acrylic paint, you can use lacquer paint, you can use enamel paint if you want to. Whatever you wanna use, it's up to you. Inks though, if you haven't used them yet, I suggest you do a little practice with them first. So this is the Dowler Rowney. They're pretty much top of the line inks. They're highly pigmented. 
They're beautiful to work in the airbrush, really nice. So we got the red, we got the orange, we have a sepia, and we also have a burnt umber, and I have a yellow. The yellow we're not going to use in this, that's going to be for a later video on how to make leaves, and hopefully you enjoy that one. Now the pigments actually go to the bottom like Tamiya paints, so you're going to have to break them up. I didn't use the Vortex mixer on them, what I actually used was my Badger Spinner, which does a great job in this bottle. Breaks them up, it brings all the pigments back to the top, it gets everything nice and thick again. Well, not thick, they're pretty thin, but you know what I mean about color. So inside the bottle comes this glass eyedropper. Now with the eyedropper, you want to be careful when you're done. You want to clean this eyedropper out because the acrylic pigments actually bind up in there after a while. They don't get hard, but they do settle in and you have a tough time with the eyedropper. This eyedropper does come apart very easily. All you have to do is grab the glass, pop it out, run it through some water or use a Q-tip, something like that to get all the gunk out of there. And also in the bubble up top, the pigments will sit up there and solidify and then you'll have trouble getting them in and out. So just make sure you clean up all this stuff once you're done and you can just pop it back in like this and you're good to go. It's easy. Now when you get the bottle, it comes in pushed in like that. Make sure you pull it out and you're all set. So we're going burnt umber directly into the pot, no thinning or anything like that. Again, I suggest if you do get inks and you haven't used them, practice on something first because they are different than acrylic paints. And also make sure after you're done with your inks to clean out your airbrush very, very well because they do stain and will clog your airbrush. We still have plenty of burnt umber in the pot, but now we're going to be adding a couple drops of orange just to lighten it up and get a different tone when we're airbrushing onto the top of the roof, or the hood I should say, of the engine. So drop three drops of orange in there, we're going to mix it up, and again we're not putting any type of thinner or anything like that into the ink. They're way thin enough where they're going to shoot through your airbrush very, very easily, so don't worry about adding thinners. Just do the ink by itself. I almost fib to you guys. After I get everything all nice and mixed up and making sure I have the color I want, I do add a few drops of Vallejo Flow Improver in there because of the inks getting high tip dry. Now we're gonna take that second batch of ink and we're just gonna start making random patterns. And just one more variation of color to give the hood a little bit more depth when we take the other paint off.
And here are the three separate panels we finished up, the trunk, the hood, and the door. We used all different combinations of the acrylic inks from the sepia to the burnt umber, mixes with the oranges and the reds, and it kind of looks pretty good. We won't really be able to tell until we get the main color on there and stripped off. So I did also do the car itself. I did the hood and I tried to experiment a little bit, leaving globs of paint on top. Hopefully when the other paint goes on, it looks like paint bubbling through. But if it doesn't, then I'll just sand that down. I went a little crazy with the orange tones, but again, I won't know how that looks until I start taking paint off and we see that rust color coming through. If it is too orange, then what we'll do is we'll just use the sponge technique and we'll use some sepias and uh, umbers and stuff like that all mixed together just to darken up some spots and make it look more realistic. And hopefully we don't have to do too much of that and this comes out really well once the paint is off. Now on to the next step of the rusting process. We flat coated all of the pieces, this way it seals in all those inks and we don't have to worry about ruining the work that we just did. We're going to start the chipping process on this, but we're not going to use the salt technique. We're not going to use any type of chipping fluids or anything like that. We're going to go with another technique and that is going to be the Elmer's glue technique. And thankfully the wife is a school teacher, so we have a whole jug of the Elmer's glue. So let's get you over to how we're going to do this and you can see how this ch chipping technique works. And here we go. This is what you're going to need for this technique, the piece the glue, white glue of course, and also a sponge. I use sea sponges, I get them at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And then it's just simply tear a piece off of it. And here's a little hint, dampen the sponge so it's not so hard because it has no moisture. Dampen it with water, squeeze it out, and it's a lot easier to use than being stiff like that. So that's just a quick tip. Next, I'm gonna put my gloves on because I'm gonna be handling the piece and I don't wanna get my oils all over the piece again because we already have it painted and sealed in, so it's better to keep our oils off of there. So I'm just gonna take the sponge in the tweezers, gonna dip it in the glue, and it's kind of like dry brushing. You don't want gobs and gobs of glue on there. Unless you want a big patch, you can do it like that. But you're just gonna drip it off, and then you're gonna take your paper towel and you're gonna dab it off like you're dry brushing. And so you just have a little bit of glue on there and you could keep looking like I am just to make sure and tap 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 and then the next thing you do is you're just going to get your piece and you're going to start dabbing in random patterns and here we go there you go you can see the little bit of white going onto the piece itself and then you're just going to do that all over the hood Now that the glue has dried, we're going to go into the painting process. We're going to use Scale 75 Sky Blue SC-50. This is an acrylic gel based paint, so if you haven't used this one, practice with this too. Now that the glue is dried, the primer is dried, all that other stuff underneath is dried, we're going to start painting this car in very light layers.
And here's our finished product after about three or four layers of paint. Everything is sealed in, the glue, the rust, the clear coat we put on. And now we're gonna add some more lighter shades to this to give it that feel that it's been sitting out in the sun. The next step in the process is I'm gonna add some white to the blue. This way it makes it lighter and it makes it look more and more sun faded. So here we're gonna go towards the middle of the panels or the top end of the door here and get those a lighter shade and also in the middle of the roof. This makes it look like the sun has been sitting and beating on it. And this isn't the only layer we're gonna do. So try not to make it too white at this point. So we're gonna make it a little lighter later on. Let's do some painting. This is where we're going to lighten up the paint even more, but this time we're going to go in a smaller radius to leave the darker color than the lighter color and the lightest color all the way in the middle to make it look really, really sun faded. And this is the finished product. It's a little hard to see on camera, but the outside edges are darker, then it gets to a lighter color, and then it gets to a really light color towards the center. We may lose a lot of this with the rusting, but it's always good to practice while we're painting. It gets our skills that much better. So hopefully this will show up and we'll have a good looking car, a good looking actually beat up car. Now we're on to the fun part. We're gonna take our toothbrush and get ready to scrub off the paint or actually the glue underneath the paint. So this is, this is really the part that gets exciting and we get to see if this works out or not. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually wet the toothbrush and then we're gonna take that toothbrush and just stamp some water onto there and get the piece moist also. Besides having the brush moist, it makes it a little bit easier to scrub. So we got the water on there, we'll run it around and you can actually see the lighter impression in the middle. We're gonna probably lose that because I did a lot of rust on the trunk. Now just take your toothbrush and start scrubbing and I'll let you watch all the pieces become rusty.
And here's the finished door. The white you saw was the glue, so you do have to rinse that off and get it off there before you finish anything. Now, if you don't like the chipping pattern or there's too much red or orange, you can always use the sponge technique and use either browns or sepias or something like that to add more chips in so you get the color variation you want and the chipping you want. You're not set in stone with this method. And here are all three pieces already done up. We have the door, we have the engine cover, or the hood, and the trunk. So everything's all scratched up. We got the colors through. So everything's looking pretty good. There are some spots that I wanna to touch up with the sponge technique, and that's gonna be adding some more colors, a little more orange in places, a little more burnt umber in places, just to make it look that much better. So we're gonna do that right now. As you can see, the glue is dried on the car and it's time to begin the painting process again. We're gonna do the same exact thing we did with the hood, the door, and the trunk. We're gonna build it all up in light layers, eventually getting to the lighter and lighter colors on the high points of the car, the high points of the fenders, the top of the roof, and the high points of the rear fenders and the tops of the doors. So enjoy the painting process.
And there goes our pretty, pretty paint job. We used the same technique as before with the toothbrush and we scrubbed off all the glue. As you can see, there's a lot more reds and oranges in there, so we're gonna have to use the sponge technique with a couple darker colors just to make that look better. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the roof and I'm gonna do that with sandpaper. But you're gonna notice when I do it, it's scratching and not sanding. And the problem there is I only hit it with a blow dryer. I didn't really let the paint set up. So I was only able to scratch it. But what I did was I wet it down and I went really, really light with the sandpaper. And then I was able to feather everything out. Even if I had some scratch marks, it would still look good. But I try to get as many of those as I could out. So here's what I did with the car. And here's the car after it's been done, sanded, and dried off. We're going to use the sponge technique again, and we're going to add some more darker spots to try to get rid of a lot of the redness and orange that's in the car. But if I don't like it again after the video's over, I still may add a few bits and bobs here and there. Well, here she is. She still has some color variation to do, and that's okay. You know, things can be done afterwards. Now, I clear coated her with a gloss clear coat, and the reason I do this is because of the weathering that's coming afterwards, that we're gonna do streaking, probably with enamels, and the clear coat actually will help do the streaking. If you use a flat coat, then the streaking will get caught up into it, because a flat coat is actually grainier and you want a smooth coat to do that, and then we can seal it with a flat coat at the end.
I really wasn't happy with the look of the car on the passenger side, how much rust there was in the back and the front, so I taped off the car, masked it up, and I shot some gray primer over there. Plus, I didn't want to lose the holes that we made. It looked really good. And we're also going to do some weathering to the door. We're going to streak around the holes. We're going to add some grime. I did throw a clear coat over the gray primer to seal that in. This way, when we do the future weathering, it'll be okay. The next episode, we'll be working on streaking and grime and stuff like that, adding the details like chrome and such. So there's still a lot more to go to this car. If you enjoyed this episode, keep an eye out for the next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. It really helps out the channel and spreading to other people on YouTube. All right, boys and girls, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed what I was doing, even with the mistakes that were in the video. It's the only way we learn is by making mistakes. Now, on to that question. Do you guys prefer that I would do this all in one 45 minute to an hour video, or do you like the segments that are only about eight to 15 minutes long tops? Let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate your opinion on these matters. This way we can make better videos for you and keep channel content much better. So that's pretty much it, everybody, on this build. Look forward to the next one where we'll be doing streaking, grime, dirt, and all that other stuff to get this guy going a little bit uglier. So everybody, take care. Have a great night. Make sure you're staying safe out there. Take care, and bye-bye.